before you got to your congregation in Maryland, uh, already moving in the direction of connecting with God in language? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, you know, one of the factors in that, I think, is a narrative imagination. Uh, I think the fact that I grew up in a storytelling culture made a huge difference for me. Mm -hmm. I grew up Pentecostal. All our pastors were great storytellers. And, um, and they, some of them, knew the whole Bible. They didn't have texts. The whole Bible was their text. So mm -hmm. all the texts fit together. They mm -hmm. weren't exegeting just two verses. Mm -hmm. And my mother was an incredible storyteller. So I learned all the stories in the Bible through her imagination. And I think getting that narrative sense that the Bible is a, it's a story, it's an inspired story, but it's, you can't pick a verse out and take it out of the context of the whole Bible and make make any good sense out of it. Well, you can make good sense out of it, but you can't make complete sense out of it. Yeah. So I think getting that narrative sense, I talk a lot, a lot when I talk to pastors about developing a pastoral imagination. Instead of seeing the pastoral task as divided into going to the hospital, preparing a sermon, teaching class, counseling people, forget all that stuff. That's, I mean, all of that has some sense, but if you don't have a pastoral imagination that's working all this into a sense of living a holy life, um, you know, most of the Christian life is not self-conscious. Um, and most of a pastor's life, I don't think is self-conscious. Most of pastoral work we do, those of us who are pastors, we don't know what we're doing. We later on realize something happened. Sometimes it's five years later. Uh, but, you know, it's not just pastors, it's not just Christians, it's, it's parents. Um, we have a very, I don't want to be too harsh here, but in America, we have a very impoverished imagination. We've, uh, we're not trained, not taught, not immersed in an imaginative world. And the Bible is does bring us into a world where most of the reality is invisible. Most of what the Bible talks about, mm -hmm. you don't see and you don't hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why metaphors are so important. They become a link between the seen world and the unseen world. And uh, you've got to...